Welcome, everybody, to the Sam McKee Memorial Broadcast Set. I'm Dave Little, and this is In the Sulky. My guest tonight is John Calabrese, mm. noted amateur driver here in the Meadowlands Amateur Driving Club and others. Oh, wait a minute. I should have introduced you as John Calabrese, the 2023 Dan Patch Amateur Driver of the Year. How does that feel to be introduced that way? Yeah, it feels pretty good. Thank you, Dave. Uh, it's great to be here. But yeah, it sounds good. How did you come to get the award? Uh, a lot of driving and a lot of good horses. Um, it's all about having horses to drive. And last year, I was very lucky to have some good horses. You know, the Meadowlands Amateur Driving Club is obviously something that we're very aware of here uh, in East Rutherford, New Jersey. But uh, that only scratches the surface. There are many amateur driving clubs out there. Yeah, a lot of opportunity to drive. Uh, about six tracks in a, within a three-hour drive. So if you want to get in a car, you could do a lot of driving. Now, obviously, uh, the amateur driving movement is something that has really uh, taken off over the last, I would say, 20 years. Uh, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, I wish they had it when I was young. You right. know, because when you were young, you had to go to a B track to get rolling. But now, if you look at uh, the current drivers like Tyler Miller and Johnny Alley, and uh, Brett Beckwith. Right. I mean, these are all Joey graduates, right. Joey. These are all graduates of the program, so. Yeah, so it is great to see that yeah. the, some of the amateur drivers certainly have gone on to be first-rate drivers against the uh, A guys, I guess I'll call them, you know. Yes, so, for sure. Certainly when you go against uh, the Dexter Duns and the Yannick Jingras of the world, it's a much tougher assignment. Yeah, but it's a great starting ground, yeah. you know, for these guys. Now. You're a huge Bruce Springsteen fan, so we got to get this out of the way. Yeah. How many years have you followed the boss, and have you traveled to foreign countries to see him perform? Yeah, uh, 78 at the Garden was my first show. Right. And, yeah, I've, I've been lucky. You know, some people take vacations to Florida and the islands. I plan mine around going to see Bruce. Now, I like uh, to tell people that I've seen the Charlie Daniels Band 125 times. How many times have you seen Bruce live? Uh, between 225 and I'd say 250. So, uh -huh. uh, yeah, it's what so, I do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, when you love a band, you definitely want to just go out and catch as many shows as you can. Now, your first harness racing exposure came on a pretty important night in the history of the number one track in the world. Of course, I speak of the one right here, the Mile Oval. You were here on opening night in September of 1976. Did something go off in your mind and say, hey, this is for me? Yeah, I would say during that first year, we used to come down a lot. And I was just, um, I loved horses. Loved horses from an early age. Because uh, if you grew up in the 60s, you had every TV show. Right. Was like Wagon Train and Roy Rogers. So I don't love a ho horses from an early age. And I started coming a lot down here. So yeah. Uh, Loved it. Loved coming to the Meadowlands. Let's talk about some of the uh, notable things that you have accomplished with our first graphic, one that I called Prove It All Night, in honor of Bruce Springsteen, of course. <laughs> uh, you won the 2023 Not A Spring Series Final. You won the 2023 AHDC Spring Championship. But that first bullet job sold a record 1,042 hot dogs in one night. You yeah. got to tell us about this. What, what, what is that about? Well, to, to get in to watch the Giant Games, I worked for Harry M. Stevens. Right. And after the first year here, when they built the park, they put some hot dog carts out on the infield. So uh, I just moved up the ladder in a couple of years and uh, had the best spot, and it was pretty easy because there were a lot of people here, and it was just, you know, dishing them out all night. Now, the 1,042 hot dogs came on a very special night. Yeah. Who was here that night racing? Uh, that would have been Nia Tross in the Oliver Wendell Holmes, and he brought a lot of people here that night. Uh, I think it was 42,000, and it was just a great night. Yeah, no, that was a great era. I got into it one year later, but certainly I know of Nia Tross for sure, arguably the greatest harness horse of all time. Now, John, our regular players, either they're big time into the amateur races or they don't care for them at all. I've been critical as well because while I know our betters like a product that's not favorites heavy, the form at times has been extremely tough to gauge. Lately, there's been much more form in the events, which I can tell you I appreciate. Please take a minute and tell the naysayers why the amateur races work. Well, for the track, we always fill a 10-horse field. 
and I think some people do like the races where you have to maybe look for not the favorite. So I think it's for some people, and you got ten guys trying to get trying to get the win. Right. So it's very competitive, and it's just a a competitive race and. And I think it, it gives you t good tote value, too. Yeah, no, there's no question about that. Certainly, they are wide-open events a lot of the time. But I think the most important factor is that a lot of the drivers are owners, and that leads to big 10-horse fields. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. You go to a track on a bad night or bad weather, and there'll be scratches all over. Right. But you know the amateurs will have no scratches. Yeah, there's no question about that. All right, let's keep the Springsteen thing going and check out a graphic. I call local hero. And of course, uh, John, you won the Italian American drivers race at Freehold and you traveled to Flamborough Downs and won an amateur event up there. Yeah, I was very happy to win the Italian American race because I drove bad the year before. It was great to go up to Flamborough because I used to work there actually. And uh, I drove a nice horse up there. I tipped him early and he took off. Uh, two for tripping was his name, and he was really good that night. So it was a it was a great trip. Are you looking forward to going to Finland and representing the U.S.? Very much. Uh, That's going to be a heck of a trip, isn't it? Yeah, and it's uh, to be in the World Championships and to get to wear American colors. That's something pretty cool. Yeah, something that's something I'm really looking forward to. That's really going to be great. I can't wait to follow that. Now, I want to talk about the Calabrese highlight reel. You started the Meadowlands meeting with four starts and four wins. Let's take a look at one of the horses that got you to the winner's circle with a race back on March the 8th, and you made a big move down the backside when the flow had backed up in your face. I talk, of course, of all in due time. Tell us what you were thinking as the race unfolds. Uh, I love this horse all in due time, and it's a little late into the race, but they were dueling up front pretty good, and it just felt like time to move. And when I moved him, he had a lot of trot. He's a really honest horse. Bill McKenzie uh, does a great job with him, and uh, he's my boy. I've gotten to driven a lot, and I mean, he was on cruise control right from here. Uh, just brushed to the front and and just sitting there, keeping him awake. That was it. So it was a very easy drive. Uh, nice horse. Yeah, certainly all in due time here, moving very well through the stretch on the way to an easy victory. So all in due time is a horse who's got you into the winner's circle a couple of times during the meeting, but another horse who's gotten you to the winner's circle a couple of times, a horse who I think might be even a little more talented than all in due time. That, of course, I speak of Sunshine's Finest, who was just terrific in the footage we're about to see. This was a 7-1 to one surprise, and this horse really, really did a great job. Yeah, I got lucky to pick up this drive uh, Bill Clark was on vacation. Uh, I'm across from Tom Shea, so I knew the horse. I had never sat in behind him, but boy, great gated. And when I asked him, he was full of pace. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, it's been great to see uh, you win. It's been great to see uh, Mariner Sealster, who's going to race tonight, looking for five in a row. So there are great storylines in the amateur racing here at the Meadowlands, the Meadowlands Amateur Driving Club. So, John, you're going for a repeat as the amateur driver of the year. So how are you going to go about it? Just get as much drives in as I can. Uh, I, I've started off this year with some good horses to drive. And uh, if I just keep driving and relax and let it come to me, I think I could I can come close. There's a lot of good drivers out there. Uh, Tony Vivruso and, and Beltrami and Jimmy Slendorn and, and Yogi. Yogi's started a little slow this year, but he'll... He'll get it rolling later. So there's a bunch of good guys, and those are only the Meadowlands guys. There's a lot of guys in the country that can really drive. So I just give it my best shot. Well, John Calabrese, uh, many, many, uh, much good luck to you in your quest to become the third back-to-back -back winner of the Amateur Driver of the Year, the Dan Patch Award. John, thanks so much for spending a few Dave, minutes with us tonight. Thank you so much. All right. That's it for John Calabrese. He's going to jump out of that chair and jumping in after this break. Anthony Stabile, he and I will talk about tonight's featured action right after this.